the early days of motorcycling in Britain, the speed limit was four miles per hour, and a man had to walk in front with a red flag. Things have speeded up a bit since then, so have the casualties. Safety on a motorcycle means control. Police records show that most riders involved in an accident lost control of their machine at a critical moment. Here, men of the Royal Corps of Signals show what can be done in the way of control. If you think that's easy, how about this? You've just got time to count how many men are riding on that machine. Control at slow speeds is just as difficult and just as important as control at fast speeds. When you can do this, you have a certain right to think you can ride a motorcycle. At Whitmer Pool in Nottinghamshire, the AA have a school for their riders. During the summer, these patrolmen change from combination to solo machines, as these are better for dense traffic conditions. And so they do a week's refresher course on solos. It's easy to tear up a hill fast, but far more difficult to go up slowly in a stream of traffic with no wobbles and no feet on the ground. Water must be taken at the correct speed. Not so slow as to stall the engine, and not so fast as to cause splashes to get into the engine. The examiner watches to see that the rider obeys the rule, after water, test your brakes. The RAC and Autocycle Union run schools for motorcyclists. Any rider can take one of these courses, which are spread over 12 weeks. During the last seven years, 10,000 riders have done so and obtained certificates of proficiency. There are one and a half million motorcycles in Britain and several times that number of cars. Yet, there are two motorcyclists killed for every motorist. The Royal Society for the Prevention of Accidents is keenly interested in these courses. The head of Rosper House, Commander Hawker, reminds these riders that their first responsibility is to remain alive. The school at the Crystal Palace has passed over a thousand new riders. Enthusiasts among this thousand have been largely responsible for the revival of racing at the palace. The sidecars used for this event aren't exactly suitable for taking grandma out to a spin in the country. And the so-called passengers have no time to sit back and admire the view. The most famous motorcycling event in the world takes place in the Isle of Man. Ask any group of Manxmen what TT stands for and you won't hear a single teetotal or tuberculin testing. Just a loud chorus of tourist trophy. Every year shiploads of competitors and spectators come over from the mainland and descend on Douglas. At other times of the year, Douglas is a small quiet market town. One horsepower can pull a whole tramload of people. But no motorcycle enthusiast would thank you for a one-horsepower motorbike. He likes to feel a good few horses tucked away in the chunk of metal between his knees. The TT mountain course is 37 and three-quarter miles around, and the riders must lap it six times. Each lap, they make 107 left-hand bends and 112 right-handers. Here, the competitors are practicing and getting used to the course. Now they're down to serious business. There are half a dozen hump bridges on the course, and this one at Balor demands first-class riding skill to negotiate the right-hand bend immediately after landing. This is the junior TT race, won by Hartle, number 12. Ramsey is the island's second largest town, and the course leads through Parliament Square. the course again to Braddon Bridge. This section demands rapid acceleration in low gears and is a great test of skill. At 
the end of Sulby Strait, world champion John Surtees breaks hard to negotiate the bridge. Others are hot on his tail. Now it's time for the senior event, for machines of up to 500cc. Surtees is out to avenge his defeat by Hartle in the junior event. Here is Hartle. Surtees. Rowbottom. The first pair are Brown of Australia and Anderson. Number 11 is Hartle and number 12, Phyllis of Australia. The leaders gather speed as they tear towards Braddon Bridge with its demands of low gear work and rapid acceleration. down the hill at Craignabar, the riders must brake hard to reduce speed from 140 to below 40 miles per hour for the right angled corner. Seven miles gone at the last lap and they come to the fast corner at Balacrame and then onto Balak Bridge. For 226 miles they've been battling it out over the zigzag mountain course, climbing to 1400 feet and dropping down again to sea level. For 30 miles of the course, they've had their brakes hard on. Yet, the winner's average speed is 102.44 miles per hour. And John Surtees is winner of the TT Senior Event for the third time in succession. 300 riders during practice and races covered 100,000 miles over this mountainous course at speeds reaching 140 miles per hour. And yet, there wasn't one serious accident. Before Surtees, the greatest name in motorcycling was Jeff Duke, now retired to run a hotel on the island. Jeff has proved that, given the necessary skill, you can be a motorcyclist and still stay alive. Jeff began his motorcycling career with men like these of the Royal Corps of Signals. Control is the essence of safety. Control under any conditions and all circumstances. These men are professionals. They're in the saddle all day and every day. They know that, to a motorcyclist, control means the difference between life and death. It's as simple as that. <laughs> 